Tesla recently unveiled their new semi truck in Los Angeles, which might have been a little overshadowed by the announcement of the Roadster at the same time. But today we're going to take a look at the semi truck because this could be a billion dollar product category for Tesla in the near future. The Tesla Semi is a heavy duty tractor hauler aimed at disrupting the shipping industry. It classifies as a class eight truck with a gross vehicle weight north of 80,000 pounds. The specs that Tesla has put out are pretty ridiculous. With that full 80,000 pound load, which is about 3,600 kilograms, it goes zero to 60 in 20 seconds. Without the load, it goes zero to 60 about as fast as my Model S does. Very crazy, that's insane. Now on the top end, this new truck will go upwards of 500 miles on a single charge. That's just over 800 kilometers. And it has so much power that it can go up a 5% grade at a constant 65 miles per hour, which is over 100 kilometers per hour compared to the 45 miles per hour that a regular diesel truck can go. So this is gonna make it be able to travel a lot faster and get those deliveries there even sooner. It has four independent motors controlling the powertrain, which can be improved over time by software updates, giving it potential for over the air changes that will improve range and efficiency. The reported energy consumption is under two kilowatt hours per mile, which if you multiply by the 500 miles of distance, give you an estimated battery pack of 1,000 kilowatt hours or one megawatt hour. Tesla estimates that a company with the Tesla Semi will save around $200,000 in the life of the truck going upwards of a million miles. This begs the question though, what is the payback period? Meaning when I buy it, I'm gonna have to pay more upfront. How long until I get that money back and then I really start seeing those savings? Tesla puts the payback period at only two years practically the blink of an eye when you talk about an industry like this that is so long standing and has so many big cycles. The Tesla Semi, as I mentioned, is a class eight truck and that is aimed at tackling these long haul routes. While the range is only 500 miles per charge, after eight hours of driving, the drivers are required to take a 30 minute break. And coincidentally, that is the exact time it will take to recharge the truck with up to 400 miles of additional range at the newly announced Mega Charger. Okay, sorry, just had to do that. Mega Chargers is such an awesome name. In the US, trucks move around 70% of the country's freight and bring in over $700 billion in revenues. This is a ginormous market. Now in comparison, the cell phone market each year, which you may also think of ginormous, is only around $80 billion. So almost a full order of magnitude smaller than the trucking revenues. So this really is a huge play for Tesla. Now, this industry is only getting bigger because we as consumers continue to order things online and just get them delivered to our house. We're not going to retail stores. So the amount of trucks you need and the amount of products you're shipping are just going up and up as our couch-based consumerism here in the United States continues to grow. Companies are already jumping on board here and Walmart recently reported that they've already ordered 15 of these new semis. And there were many others at the event that Tesla pointed to in the first part of the speech where they said, thank you for all the orders you've placed. Now it's unlikely we'll know exactly how many orders they have until maybe a future earnings call. But I would say that right now it's safe to assume that they have probably a couple hundred orders already placed for these trucks. Enough, hopefully for them, to fund the operations and manufacturing needed to make the trucks. Tesla just recently unveiled the expected price of the trucks to be 150K for the 300 mile version and 180,000 for the 500 mile version. Considering this likely has a one megawatt hour battery, this hints at a major breakthrough in battery technology if they can sell them this cheap. 
Previous statements from Tesla and others in the industry indicated that the price per kilowatt hour for a battery was around $145. So if you have a 1,000 kilowatt hour pack or one megawatt hour at $145 per kilowatt, you'd be looking at $145,000 before spending a dime on the cab itself. Not to mention the margin you need to cover the cost of producing the truck. This leads me to believe that there are only a couple possible explanations here. One is that Tesla did indeed make a battery breakthrough that lets them manufacture these at a dramatically reduced cost. Or the second option is that they are selling these trucks at a loss. I'm inclined to go with number one because Tesla is operating on thin margins and burning through cash at an exceptionally high rate. So it's unlikely that their investors and everyone else would really be on board with them selling it at this price and taking a loss. So for the price of the truck alone in our analysis here, we're gonna put it at $180,000 for our estimate. With diesel trucks, you have a cheaper initial price for sure, maybe around 120K, depending on which options you go with, whether or not you need a sleeper cab, etc. Then you have over $20,000 a year on oil changes, tires, hard parts replacements, and other issues that arise. Certainly the Tesla truck won't be 100% free of these things, all trucks need new tires for example, but considering you'll never have to replace the brakes. So the brake pads basically last forever. The, 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 you never need to replace brake pads ever. Ever. And in addition, the Tesla Semi has no engine, transmission, after treatment system, or differentials that require upkeep. So it's really not a stretch to say that the cost of maintenance and repairs, the annual cost just of upkeep on the vehicle, could be 70% or less compared to a regular diesel cab. Besides those other savings, the fuel savings are gonna make a huge impact on that higher initial price making that payback period of two years a reality. Now Tesla estimates over 1 million miles in a semi will get you about $200,000 in savings, which is pretty good. But the fascinating thing here is that from day one, the fuel costs alone will save you about 60% over diesel. At the event, Elon also dropped this bomb about the fuel costs for the Tesla Semi. We're guaranteeing a seven cent kilowatt wholesale price. I want to be clear about that. This is real, these are real numbers. That is insane and is gonna be a major reason why the trucking industry will likely soften their stance against Tesla. So if we take the seven cents per kilowatt hour, which they can guarantee because they control the entire system, the solar energy that's building up the actual electricity, storing it in a power pack and then providing it in a mega charger, really there's no outside influence that would affect that so they can guarantee that price and it takes two kilowatt hours to go one mile, more or less, then we're looking at 14 cents per mile in the Tesla Semi compared to 36 cents with the diesel prices with the estimates we had earlier, giving us over a 60% savings on fuel alone. Now, diesel prices, along with gasoline prices, fluctuate over time, making it difficult for trucking companies to control their costs and remain profitable. Let's unpack this for a second. Trucking companies have three general cost categories for their trucks, fixed costs, variable costs, and salaries. Fixed costs are the ones that don't change regardless of how much you use your truck. There are things like the truck payment, insurance, permits, and any tags or anything that you need to go on your routes. Variable costs or the other category do change. For example, the more you drive your truck, the more fuel you need and the more maintenance you'll have. So these things can change, but usually shift with the use of the truck. So it's always almost a good thing when these costs go up because that means you're making more money as well. Unless you have things like maintenance and repairs that at certain points in the truck's life skyrocket as we see in typical conventional cars. And lastly, you have salaries. Now these generally refer to the drivers, but also to the people that keep the truck running smoothly and handle coordinating the loads and figuring out dispatching and all those kind of things. When it's all said and done, Tesla estimates that from day one, you'll see a 20% lower cost of ownership. And as Elon put it, I want to be clear, this is from day one. And while it's hard to say how exact those numbers are, they'll definitely win in the long run. That's a guarantee. Now, all of this doesn't take into account the convoy option in which one driver leads a convoy with two driverless semis behind him. 
Yeah, that's an 80,000 pound truck traveling at 65 miles per hour without a person behind the wheel. As scary as that may sound, it's not really that crazy if you consider that they'll likely only use this on known routes in excellent road conditions. And in the end, all these trucks that are in the convoy are really doing is following the front truck. They're not really driving on their own. They're just having to make a few decisions about how to stay in the lane and how fast to go. Now in this scenario, Tesla puts the true cost of ownership of a regular diesel truck at 2X the cost of a semi. They even tout that this is cheaper than rail. Now that is a stretch, but one that they may be able to make, especially as the mega charger network grows. Now these numbers do make sense considering one of the most expensive costs is the driver and you'd be cutting out two of the three in this scenario. Now, I'm sure by now you're dying to get your hands on one, right? Well, like all Tesla models, you're going to have to wait a little while. Elon reported that production begins in 2019, but like we've heard before, I would add at least six months to that or maybe even more to be realistic here. The reason I say that, besides our history of delays, is that they don't actually have a place to make the truck right now. Elon has famously said that the Fremont plant is bursting at the seams and that they're in the middle of production hell right now trying to get the Model 3 out the door. Let's not forget that the Model 3 is the reason for Tesla's existence and the cornerstone to their entire mission. So yeah, that's definitely the priority right now. But how will they even build it? Well, we don't have hard answers on that yet, but most people I've talked to with knowledge in this space agree that it would make sense for them to buy an old plant somewhere in North America and retrofit, or perhaps have a large chunk of the truck be made by someone else, and then maybe final assembly is done by them in a smaller facility that's easier to, to get up and running. This is a common practice in the industry, but not one that Tesla typically has embraced with their vertical integration approach. Given the dramatic cost savings for fuel, maintenance, repairs, and potentially some of the drivers, the Tesla Semi could be north of $400,000 and still make economic sense for companies looking to save money. Of course, many large companies have short-sightedness due to how the stock market works and often how executive compensation is directly tied to the quarterly earnings, so it may be a challenge for them to think in those kind of terms, but with merely a two-year payback period, it isn't likely that the added cost of the Tesla Semi would reduce adoption really in any way. As we've seen, this could be a major win for shipping companies looking to save money. If the convoy scenario is legal and possible, they could be saving upwards of 60% on the driver cost, one of the largest expenses that they have, not to mention locking in the rate of seven cents per kilowatt hour and basically all of the maintenance and repairs being completely eliminated here with the exception of tires. So in the end, I think the truck looks fantastic. Uh, I'm most excited about the reduction and emissions. And also this could reduce shipping costs for a lot of companies helping boost the economy here in the United States and then economies elsewhere as they you know, start to expand beyond just North America. So I'd love to know what you think. Leave me a comment down below, especially if you have experience in this industry. This is one that's pretty new to me, but I'm doing my best to understand all the context behind it. And as all industries are, there is a lot of nuance here. So I'd love to learn from you. Please let me know any other things that I missed here and how I could better understand the cost and, and analyze that for you and then present it in a future video. And if you like this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Here on Teslanomics, we look at the cost behind Tesla and other companies changing our world like no others because it's really important to understand how these things are gonna shake out. And we know that the advertised price of things is never really what it comes out to be. So if you're into that, please consider subscribing. We also have an email list at teslanomics.co that you can go get on to make sure you don't miss any of the great content that we're making. And lastly, remember, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching and I'll see you back here next time.